Mrs. Rebo. Speaker, um, the leader doesn't seem to like answering any of my constitutional questions directly, I'm afraid. Uh, right enough, they're a bit tricky for her government, but God loves a trier, so let's see if she can answer this. At Scottish Affairs Committee this week, the Secretary of State for Scotland revealed the head of the UK Civil Service is looking into whether officials in Scotland will be allowed to do work related to our next independence referendum following the Supreme Court's ruling last week. Now, the notion it is unlawful for the Scottish Government to pursue independence as a policy goal has been dismissed by legal academics, including former Tory MSP Professor Adam Tompkins uh, and Aileen McCarg, Professor of Public Law at Durham University, described it as a ludicrous position. And there seems to be a new measure of Scottish independence support as well, the duck test. And I'm sure we'll all be looking forward to hearing distinguished constitutional academics' views on that. The Supreme Court's decision has exposed the undemocratic lack of a legal mechanism for the Scottish Parliament yeah, yeah. to hold an independence referendum. Surely the UK government's attention should be on addressing that, not on inhibiting the work of the civil service. I received a muddled response from Scotland office ministers. First one said money allocated to Scotland by the UK Treasury came with no strings attached. Then another stepped in to say it was a matter for the civil service and we'd need to see how this plays out. Can the Leader of the House offer any clarity and perhaps a statement on duck tests establishing exactly who decides whether support for Scottish in independence has passed the appropriate avian measurements? And lastly, why won't the Chancellor follow the lead of the Scottish Government and introduce a UK equivalent of the Scottish Child Payment? The Joseph Roundtree Foundation described the increase to £25 per week per eligible child as a watershed moment, and it also found that if the payment was extended to England, Wales and Northern Ireland, a further 5.3 million children would be eligible for that crucial support. As we approach what will be a very difficult winter, perhaps Labour will join the SNP in urging ministers to hold a debate or make a statement on what further the government will do to tackle this shameful poverty. The UK government has far more tools at its disposal than the devolved governments, and it really is high time it showed the same political will. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I thank the, uh, the Honourable Lady. Um, she, as she uh, alludes to, I am a simple girl. I did read the evidence from the uh, session she uh, refers to, and I understand that uh, Secretary of State for Scotland uh, will be clarifying that matter. But what I can tell her is spending the unrestricted funds that the Scottish Government get uh, on their project of a, a further referendum is a colossal waste of money. Yeah. Um, the Scottish uh, government is one of the most, and Parliament is one of the most powerful devolved administrations in the world. With huge authority, the SNP have done their best not uh, to take up. With responsibilities, the SNP have done their best to shirk. And with the largest budget it has ever had, that they have done their best to squander. The reason why Scotland has low job creation, its education is the lowest PISA ranking since that measure was created. 700 fewer police officers than a year ago, and the worst A&E uh, wait times on record, and that the Honourable Lady's own constituency has the lowest funding settlement per person in Scotland, is not the UK Government, or the Secretary of State, or the Supreme Court, or the good people of England, Wales and Northern Ireland, nor Brexit, nor Britain. It is her party, the SNP, and their obsession with issues that the Scottish people wish they would leave aside and focus on what matters to them.